Hello and welcome to the channel. A few weeks ago, I traveled down to Bridgend in Wales to go and see Rel Acoustics at their famous UK HQ factory, where it all started several decades ago. And this building is steeped in a lot of history for subwoofers and more. And if you have owned any of the legacy rail subwoofers at any time in the last 20 odd years, there is a good chance it was built here. And in 2021, things are a little different for rail acoustics, but they still make very high quality subwoofers that I'm sure a lot of you love for hi-fi. But I was there to take a look around, obviously, but really to get a demo of a full rail 3D system for home theater or home cinema. And naturally I took my camera and all my bits with me to try and share as much of this experience with you as I could. Welcome to Relicue Stacks. This is a quick look behind the scenes of the Bridgen facility. My name's Rachel. I've been with the company now for 20 years and we have seen quite a few changes in that time. So in 2021, what happens at the Regen facility is we distribute worldwide with the exception of America. We deal with all of the UK repairs. We also deal with technical queries worldwide as well as customer service. Rel as of today, an amazing company to work for. They strive for, for, for perfection, they strive for quality and collectively between myself, Ben in technical, Wendy, my colleague, who's in the office as well. Um, we have got 52 years between the three of us, as well as our warehouse staff who are amazing at what they do. And we are just looking forward to what the next decade, 25 years brings. Terry's here today to listen to the REL 3D system. And the whole point of a 3D system is to give you a real focus on a three-dimensional soundstage that's easily achievable from a simple 5.1 system. Yes, we can go further and further. We can underpin every single channel if we wanted to, but the point of, of me showing this to Terry is so that he gets an understanding of really what we can achieve by just underpinning the front left and right, the center and the surround channels, as well as using the LFE channel. The REL 3D system is based essentially to try and get you back to original Dolby specification. Everybody thinks that just adding in an extra bass box, subwoofer, etc., just gives you extra bass. With a REL 3D system, that's really not the case. And we say this a lot, adding in a REL is not just about bass. It brings you so much more. And the most important thing about this is, don't be scared by this, because this works at every single price point. We can do this with little subwoofers, or big subwoofers. For this demonstration, we're actually using the S212, which is a fairly recent introduction. Again, it was one of the lockdown babies. And we're connecting that with high level, which is most important, as we've already said, plus it's using one of the LFE feeds. The idea of using a 212 is to match with the height of your speaker. That gives us a, a much better impression of a real scale. The 212 is perfectly matched in terms of the physicality of these speakers. Yes, okay, it's probably a little bit over the top for these, but we wanted to show Terry the real benefits of 3D. So for the center channel, we're going to underpin with the new Carbon Special, which is a bit of a treat for Terry because I've been promising him one for the last few months and we just haven't had, had any stock at all. The Carbon Special is called Special for a reason, but we're using it in this case to underpin the center channel and I'm really sure that Terry's gonna enjoy the benefits of really showing what high level does to your center channel. Often, as it is here, the center channel in most people's setup is the smallest speaker in your whole scenario. Shouldn't be really that way around. So the idea is to make the center channel as full range as your normal front left and right. The Carbon Special is an awesome subwoofer. For those of you that are lucky enough to have already got one, you'll understand <laughs> what I'm saying. The Carbon Special actually started life as an S812. Typical to the way that REL build products, ordinarily, we don't just change a driver, etc., because it doesn't work. This proves the point. In the end, we had to, to make a completely new product. So it's a new product from the floor up. People look at it and think it's just an 812 with a, with a sexy carbon driver. That's not the case. And for the surround channels, we're using the new T7X, and you may notice we're using it with the wireless adapter. That
That gives us the flexibility to place the subwoofer pretty much within reason wherever we want it to. Uh, in fact, my home subwoofer for my center channel is behind where I sit and it doesn't have any detrimental effect. So the surround speakers you can see over my shoulder are underpinned by this little subwoofer, again with high level. We're not using extra LFE to this product. It's simply high level to turn the surround products into full range speakers. Now, some of you may recognize the Predator from Terry's uh, review. This is being run wirelessly, again at the back of the room, with no loss in quality, no loss in timing. It enables us to place the subwoofer in a convenient place and at extra coverage where you need it. Okay, so when we wire up a, a RHEL 3D system, it can look pretty daunting, but it's really straightforward. All you're gonna do is wire in the high level to the same terminals that feed your speakers. We'll show you that in a second. So we're gonna concentrate, first of all, with the front left and right speakers. That will underpin the front left and right physical speakers. Then we're gonna wire up the center channel, and then we'll also show you where the surround channels get plugged into as well. Okay, so the, the first step is to rig up our front left, front right positive feeds. The black cable is our ground, which goes to the front negative feed. The other end of this cable then gets plugged straight into the back of your high level subwoofer input. And as with the center channel, we wire up in exactly the same fashion as the front left and right, but of course you've only got one terminal. So the red and the yellow go to the positive, the black goes to the black. And then you quite simply plug back in your speakers in exactly the same way as we've done for the front left and right. So we're sharing the term terminals. If you can place your center subwoofer near your center speaker, in actual fact, you can come off the back of your center speaker rather than the back of the amplifier. Just connect up in the same way, but on the speaker itself, and then plug your speaker cable back in as normal. So to make life a lot easier, we've now got wireless for all of our subwoofers. Depending on which range of product you have, you'll need the right wireless connector to go with that product. So we start with the HT wireless sender, which is called the Air. So that will give you low level LFE only. It doesn't cater for high level. If you're on the TX range, we move up to the Arrow, and this will give you high level plus LFE. Then we move up to the big Airship, which is the biggest in the range, and that will give you all of the connections that you'd normally see on the back of the S products. So you have high level, LFE in both RCA and XLR format. And don't forget, with all of the wireless, we send uncompressed full range signal without any noticeable drop in speed. So trust in wireless, we use it every day now. It's a good alternative and it really does help you place the subwoofer wherever you need it to go. So each sub is set up completely individually. So don't expect a 3D system to all have the same settings on the subwoofers. They won't be. The subs will be in different positions all around the room. Each sub is set up using high level control first to set the volume, the crossover so that we get it to blend properly into the system. And then when applicable, so in this case, the front sub, we then adjust the LFE individually. So when we add high level to any of these channels, what we will experience is extra detail, extra scale, extra depth. And that's really important, not just for the front left and right. You'd be amazed at how much information you're gonna get if you underpin your center channel. As I think we said earlier in the, in the presentation, the center channel often is the smallest speaker in your surround package. That makes it, if you like, probably the most important channel to underpin because it will really open up what you can really get from your, from your soundtrack. Just for a quick recap, the system was 5.1 or really 5.2 to be technically correct. So no Dolby Atmos or anything like that going on here. It was a simple system on purpose to try and show me, and I suppose anybody else, what is possible. And the AV receiver was a Yamaha and there was no DSP being applied. And the speaker package was Dyn Audio Evoke. The Evoke 50 for left and right speakers, the Evoke 30 for surround speakers, and the Evoke 25C for the center speaker. And then to clarify the subwoofers being used, it was the 212SX being used high level, 
to underpin the front left and right speakers and also being used for the LFE or points one base channel. The carbon special subwoofer was being used high level to underpin the center speaker. The T7X was being used high level over wireless to underpin the surround speakers and the HT1508 Predator subwoofer was again being used wireless, but for LFE only. So a second 0.1 subwoofer. So one at the front and one at the back of the room, which makes sense. In the Yamaha, the speakers were all set to large, which is an important setup distinction. To warm me up, Rob did the usual real high level demo. Played some stereo music with and without the 212SX subwoofer, and I've had this same subwoofer demo numerous times now, and it's always the same end result. The sound is noticeably better with the subwoofer engaged. There is more solidity to the overall sound, imaging is improved, and there is more ambience to the music, which comes across as an improved sense of space. And it was black and white in terms of the improvement made with the subwoofer playing in the system. And Rail's theory for their 3D system for home cinema is if the subwoofer makes this much difference for high level for music, why would it not make this much difference for home theater, home cinema soundtracks as well? Which does make a lot of sense when you think about it, except the situation is a little different. With home cinema, 99.999% of home cinema systems will already have a subwoofer or subwoofers in place, which is a little bit different to hi-fi systems where we are maybe be adding something to the system. Like I said, most home cinema systems already have subwoofers in place. So really what we are looking at here is a distinct setup decision. And if you set your speakers to large in the AV processor or receiver, it will think you have full range speakers attached. So 20 to 20, and it will send full bass to them. If you set your speakers to small, it will send the speaker's bass to the 0.1 LFE subwoofers from your crossover points. And because bass becomes omnidirectional below 80 hertz, it shouldn't matter where that bass is being produced from. And that is the theory. But like everything when it comes to theories, it is the theory plus a whole host of other factors which determines the overall sound quality that you will experience. And I personally think you could make both setup decisions work and sound absolutely amazing. But like always, it comes down to the setup of the system, and that is the difficult part. But back to the Rel 3D demo, Rob played a few scenes to me from one of the Fantastic Beasts movies. He started with no high level subwoofers on, just the 0.1 LFE. Then he added the 212SX over high level, again, underpinning the front left and right speakers and we listened. Next was the carbon special underpinning the center speaker on its own. And this was very interesting. And we actually did this on off demo several times. Then it was both the 212SX and carbon special. So the whole front speaker array being underpinned by subwoofers. Then the T7X was added. So high level subwoofer support for the rear speakers. And lastly added was the Predator. So the full Monty of all four. And the benefits and the effect on the sound that each subwoofer being turned on or added to the system was completely different, which makes total sense when you think about you know, a movie, we was watching the same scene over and over again. And obviously what I was experiencing was largely being dictated by what, you know, what was happening on the screen, what was happening within the soundtrack. But the one speaker, which was the consistent, and it's probably the most consistent one throughout all movies, is the center speaker. The difference the Carbon Special made was very big, even more so than the 212SX on the front left and right speakers for this scene that we were watching. And I don't know the movie well, but the scene was a chap in a bedroom and some monster is breaking out of his suitcase. And even though it's a low key scene for sound initially, the Carbon Special on the center speaker added authenticity and ambience that wasn't there when the subwoofer was turned off. So a big difference. But it's also important to remember that this was just one sub underpinning one speaker, which is naturally the best approach. The second interesting addition was the T7X on the rear speakers, because I noticed with this AV system set up like this, bass seemed to be more room placement dependent than I am used to. Adding the high level bass underpinning the rear speakers really helped to fill in the presence and scale of sound at the back of the room, which really helped to bring the full room into play in terms of the sense of immersion. 
And the final addition of the Predator subwoofer added more kick and thump that you feel. And obviously by the time the Predator was added, there was four subwoofers playing, which did add a lot of bass to the overall sound presentation. And I'm sure this was likely done on purpose because Rob from Realm, he knows me really well. He knows a big part of my job is setting up home cinema systems for people. And he knows I have crazy high expectations when it comes to bass for movies and movie soundtracks. And that I like a lot of subwoofer ass kickery as part of that sound. And even with four subwoofers playing in this medium-ish sized room, it wasn't crazy amounts, it wasn't too much, that's for sure. If anything, maybe I wouldn't have minded even a little bit more, but then again, I always do. But to conclude, did the system sound better with the three high-level subwoofers? Yes, black and white better which is no surprise to me with the system set up like this. And I had factored in the setup situation into my assessment. I personally would want to have a play with things more to see how I might be able to incorporate more subwoofers over high level into my home cinema and how I might set them up using Dirac, which might be a little bit different to how Rob did it. But most importantly, I can see some real potential to use multiple rail subwoofers over high level in a home cinema. I do think the rail wireless systems will make adding more subwoofers a lot easier for customers in more normal domestic situations. Because whichever way you look at it, whichever route you decide to go for your system setup approach, I think there are some very obvious distinct benefits for having more subwoofers in your home cinema system. The other thing that we, we use this room for, as you can probably see, we're using speakers from our friends at Dyn Audio. We make a point, when we offer our speaker pairings tool, we listen to pretty much, in fact, 99.9% .9 of everything that we recommend, we've listened to. So when we give you an idea of what we suggest to go with your own speakers, we have tried it. If you find your speakers are not on the speaker pairings tool, phone us, contact us, etc., and we'll give you guidance about what we think is the correct match with your speakers. We're lucky to have Ben. He's worked here for 20 years. That means he knows 20 years worth of rail products. More importantly for Ben, he's able to give us valid, really useful uh, information about the older products. Ben can repair whatever we can, as long as spare parts are available. Wherever we can, we will always try and repair a product. To further enhance your system, Everybody tends to look at upgrading speaker cables, etc. We've also got an upgrade high level cable. We supply high level cables straight from the box and it's a good get go cable. But a simple upgrade is to look at the baseline blue cable, which is quite an unassuming looking cable compared to some speaker cables that you'll find on the market. But it really is the best sounding with a rail subwoofer. We've tried dozens of different cables this is the best sounding. They're available in three, six, and 10 meter lengths. The standard high level, high level baseline blue comes with spade terminals for ease of connection. But then we've also got a name specific baseline blue. Now, if you have a name product, you have already the knowledge that your speaker terminals are a flush mounted four mil socket. Makes it very difficult, nigh on impossible to use spade terminals. So in this case, we fit a simple stackable banana plug, which allows you to plug into the back of your name product and then simply plug in your speaker cable as normal. The other feature that we employ on the cable underneath this green banding is a set of filters and that helps counter the name star ground system. So if you've got a name and a rail together, look at the baseline blue name specific cable, decent upgrade, very easy to use and inexpensive in the grand scheme of things. Within the Rail website, there's plenty of useful information for, for you if you're looking for a new Rail product. One of the most useful sections, in my opinion, is the speaker pairings tool. And that gives us the ability to give you a real understanding of which subwoofer we suggest to go with your very own speakers. There are thousands of pairs of speakers on the market Rail specialise in making a subwoofer to go with your speakers, be it stereo, be it AV, be it a £99 pair of speakers or a £50,000 pair of speakers. With a speaker pairing tool, you can quite simply go in, have a look at the brand, select your model, take it from there, and it gives you an understanding of where you ought to start looking. <laughs>